Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Dabo Sweeney, the Clemson Tigers wrapping up their first scrimmage of fall camp in the early reports coming out of the scrimmage. I think you have to fire up a lot of Clemson fans. That is the offense, specifically K Club Nick, the Clemson offensive line, had a really good day. And I think the first big takeaway is if this Clemson offense can find some success against this Clemson defense throughout practice and fall camp, you feel pretty good about them finding some success in 2024 because we all know that this Clemson defense is going to be one of the better units in the country. But I think more importantly, it kind of goes to a conversation that we've had a lot over the last couple of weeks, and that is, you know, a lot of national media analysts, a lot of outsiders from this Clemson program just look at Clemson and just assume that they're not going to be a very good offense in 2024 because they weren't very good in 2023, where you look a little deeper into the situation and say, all right, Kay Klubnik was a first-year starter as a second-year college football player. He was coming into an offense that was kind of just opening up a whole new scheme with Garrett Riley coming in, an offensive line that continued to go through injuries and mix-matching guys up front, and a wide receiver room that wasn't healthy all year. There were a lot of reasons to explain why Clemson struggled on offense in 2023, none of which are, hey, Kay Klubnik might just get better as a quarterback heading into year three. That's an important conversation to have because you see a lot of quarterbacks after that first year of starting continue to get better. You saw that at Joe Burrow with LSU. And Joe Burrow's first year at LSU was not very good. The next year, he goes out and wins a Heisman Trophy. Now, I'm not saying Kay Klubnik's going to win a Heisman Trophy, but I'm saying you've seen quarterbacks – get better as they get more experience under their belt. I think Jordan Travis at Florida State the last couple of years, another really good example. When you look at this Clemson offense heading into 2024 one, I don't think it's crazy to assume that K. Klubnik gets better as a quarterback. I think more importantly, you look at the offensive line. If this unit stays healthy, we think this is going to be a much improved group from 2023. And then the wide receivers, we think are significantly better, especially if they just stay healthy. And then it's the second year in Garrett Riley's system where guys are just more comfortable with some of the concepts uh, and install that they weren't very comfortable with in 2023. You make no mistake about it going from what the offense was in 2022 to 2023 under Garrett Riley. It was going to be a significant overhaul of concepts. You knew there were going to be some growing pains. And from what you're hearing out of Clemson's fall camp, I, I don't think a lot of us are surprised. I assume just us and the Clemson fans that we're talking with, I think we're not that surprised that this offense is showing like it's gotten better because there are a lot of reasons to believe this unit does get better heading into 2024. Want to get into some of the bigger storylines that we got out of the scrimmage, talk about some injury updates as well. Before we do it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys, to the Clemson fans. It's been a blast talking this program all off season long. The amount of support from the Clemson fans in the middle of the summer, as we've talked recruiting, as we've talked fall camp, it it means the world to the boys. We appreciate you guys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into what we're hearing out of that first scrimmage for Clemson. And again, I think it starts with the offensive line. This is a sneaky unit that not, not many people are talking about. If this unit stays healthy, I think this can be a really good unit in 2024. I think Blake Miller is a bona fide NFL caliber tackle at the right tackle spot. You look at Tristan Lee, Marcus Tate, Walker Parts, we've seen them play really good football. They just haven't been able to stay healthy all that often over the last couple of years. But I think most importantly, I mean, this unit has played a ton of football together. That is one of the benefits that you get from Clemson not necessarily using the transfer portal. Right, We talk about it a lot. We'd like to see Dabo Sweeney dip his toes into the transfer portal. One of the benefits you get specifically on the offensive line is continuity. When you look across the country, there are so many other programs that have multiple new faces coming into their offensive line through the transfer portal. It's going to take a while for all those new faces to gel and kind of build that continuity and chemistry. You look at this Clemson offensive line, they might have the most continuity on the offensive line in the entire country. And I think that plays a role in how good this Clemson offensive line can be in the 2024 season. And I think secondly, you're starting to see them build some depth. We talk about Colin Sadler, not even starting on this Clemson offensive line. We think Colin Sadler is a very good football player. 
Harris Sewell going into year two, we think he's a very good football player. So you start looking at not just the starting five, but six, seven, eight on this Clemson offensive line. We feel good about that unit. Then you go to K. Klubnik. K. Klubnik had a very good day, not only throwing the football, but running the football. And that's something that we would like to see Clemson look to a little bit more in 2024. It's no secret. K. Klubnik's at his most comfortable when he's outside of the pocket using his athleticism. I'm not necessarily saying that you're treating K. Klubnik as a dual threat quarterback, but you are recognizing that some of his skill sets include his elite athleticism especially in space. And so if you can get some sprint outs, some play actions where you're getting him out of the pocket, letting him use his legs, letting him be in situations where he's most comfortable, I think that's really important too. And as you see Kay Klubnik and Garrett Riley go into year two together of this quote-unquote partnership where the quarterback gets more comfortable in terms of what Garrett Riley is going to be calling, and I think more importantly, Garrett Riley gets more comfortable calling plays that K Klubnik's going to excel with. Those are reasons to think K Klubnik puts it together a little bit more in 2024. And then you look at the pass catchers. It is the first year in a really long time that I can remember Clemson being healthy in the pass catcher room. I think Jake Bringenstool, he's dealing with an injury. Outside of that, it sounds like every single wide receiver is kind of healthy in this room where you go back 12 months ago, that was the complete opposite. I mean, Kate Klubnik is working with some scout team wide receivers leading up to the 2024 or 2023 season. I think that chemistry is going to get built between Kate Klubnik and the pass catchers a little bit more. And so you take a look at the offense and say, you really like what you're hearing on the offensive side of the football. I think the last thing to add with this Clemson offense is that Keith Adams Jr. had a very, very good scrimmage. This has been a question for us heading into 2024 where we know Phil Moff is the guy. We said that all offseason, one of the better running backs in the ACC. That being said, outside of Phil Moff, you're not really sure what you have in terms of depth at the running back spot. It was the Phil Moff, Will Shipley show for the last couple of years, not really allowing a ton of other running backs to get a ton of experience. That being said, we have a lot of confidence in some of these running backs who are kind of going into year two or year three or even year one with this program, what running back really emerges and kind of takes that running back two spot to hear Keith Adams Jr., what, 5'9", 215 pounds. This kid, he's a hammer running the football, and I think he can provide some juice. You talk about teams trying to tackle Phil Maffa and Keith Adams Jr. 30-plus times a football game, not a lot of teams in the ACC are going to want to do that. And so I think Keith Adams Jr. emerging as a running back that Clemson can trust, I think that's a really big storyline. Now you go to the defensive side of the football, I don't think there's a single Clemson fan that's sitting there and saying, hey, we're worried about the defense because the Clemson offense had a good day. I think we are very confident this is going to be a top 10, top 5 unit in the country heading into 2024. I think some guys that you want to shout out is one, Ricardo Jones at the safety spot. I think that's really important because you look at the front seven. Clemson is deep. They're extremely talented. It's going to be one of the better front sevens that we see in all of college football. That one position that maybe it's a a little less talented, it's a little less deep, is at that safety spot. Ricardo Jones was a guy that we covered when he committed to Clemson in that 2024 class. This kid is a ball-hawking safety. You go back to the high school years, I mean, his sophomore and junior year, he combined for three interceptions or 13 interceptions, not three, 13 interceptions. One of the things we loved most about Ricardo Jones is massive frame at 6'3, 200 pounds, and he's a ball hawk. He uses that big frame to just get his hands on so many footballs, forcing turnovers, being active. Sounds like he has a little bit more grasp of the playbook. That's a really big storyline. I expect Ricardo Jones to probably play as a freshman, that's not often rare for Clemson. I don't think there's a better staff in the country at the, at identifying specifically young defensive backs who might be flying under the radar and emerge as guys that can play early. We saw it last year with guys like Avian Terrell, with guys like Khalil Barnes, Shelton Lewis. I think Ricardo Jones could be one of those true freshmen that contribute early for Clemson in 2024. And I think that's massive because, again, the safety spot is one of those positions that I think Clemson could maybe look for a little bit more juice as you lose a guy like Andrew Makuba. 
Ricardo Jones seeming like he's going to be a guy. I think that's a really big storyline. And we always knew Ricardo Jones could play early because of the instincts that he had. Not only is Ricardo Jones a really good athlete that has some really good physical traits, including that length and athleticism. I think more importantly, you go back to the high school film and say, this is a kid that just knows the sport of football at such a high level. That's what keeps freshmen off the field. It really has to do with athleticism anymore. It has a lot to do with, hey, can you come in, understand your role, understand the game of football at a high enough level? Ricardo Jones does that. We knew that coming out of high school. Kind of expect Ricardo Jones to play a lot for Clemson. I think that's my biggest takeaway on the defensive side of the football coming out of the scrimmage. Again, this is a Clemson team that seems to be staying relatively healthy during fall camp, which, again, has been a struggle for Clemson in the past. And I think they're getting better at the spots that they needed to get better at. We'll close it out there again. I think a lot of exciting news coming out from this Clemson program. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later.